theology is so powerful that if you follow the narrative, you will end up in the kingdom of God. You all need to make this place preacher friendly. Come on, say amen. We, we need to see the whites in the eyes. It's not an entertainment show. Come on, say amen. It's, um, but it's good to be back with you this, this morning. Um, we're going to be very quick today. Amen. Because we need to get to the baptismal pool. Um, it's, and it's still not too late. Come on, say amen. If you listened to me all week and you, you, you thought about it, um, this is the time. Amen. That you need to, to make us uh, know who you are so we can definitely get you baptized and ready for the kingdom of God. I have a question, and the question is, have you enjoyed the week? Yes. Uh, the second question is, are you ready for the kingdom? Yes. Yeah, amen, amen. The third question is, are you saved? Yes. yes, we are, amen, amen. And say it with power, is that all right? The next thing I want to say is that some of you who haven't been here a week but are here today, uh, you should know that we smile when we come to church. So turn to the person next to you and give them a big smile. Let them see the teeth you have, the teeth you don't have, and let them see what you had for breakfast, maybe still on your teeth. I don't know. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Now that you've done that, I want you to touch the person in front of you and say whatever is wrong will be all right. Just touch them. Whatever is wrong will be all right. Amen. Good? Good. Let's get into the Word of God and, and uh, get into the pool. Amen. If you've got a Bible, let's go to Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, and uh, let's look at verses 18 through 20, 18 through 20. And I've asked the, the, the young prophet here from South Africa to read it for me, amen? Now you can read it any way you want to read it. You can preach it, I don't care. I just like the way this boy is. And uh, when you go to South Africa, make sure that every month you send money to Salusi, amen? <laughs> send money back so other people can get what you got. Can the church say amen? Yeah. Luke chapter 15, verses 18 to 20. I will, I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. Verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. Father, speak in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible in Luke chapter 15 unveils three important situations. Uh, if I was preaching this uh, in front of TV cameras, I would say that this is a trilogy. Uh, this trilogy is so powerful that if you follow the narrative, you will end up in the kingdom of God. I'll go again because you wanted to say amen, but you didn't move your lips. You will end up in the kingdom of God. Come on now. I declare that is the goal of each one of us. Is that all right? Is to get to the kingdom of God. But I think something more than that is the goal of each one of us is to fall in love with Jesus. Uh, if they, heaven never was promised to me, uh, I would still love Jesus. Come on now. If, 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 if I didn't think about streets of gold, I would still love Jesus. Come on now. If, if I wasn't drinking from crystal fountains, I would still love Jesus. Because when I think about what God has done for me, and where God has taken me from. Is anybody in the building understanding what I'm saying? I declare today that the best thing that ever happened to me was to fall in love with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so the first part of the trilogy is about a man. Uh -huh. He's a farmer, probably from somewhere in Zimbabwe. And he had sheep. Come on now. And he had sheep. And he had a hundred sheep. You know the story. Uh, but, but before I get into the story, you've got to remember who he was telling the stories to. Okay. He was telling the stories to some people that didn't look like me and you. They were not church people. They didn't dress like the way we dress like. They were publicans and sinners. Come on now. I declare, if, you are, if your ministry is worth anything in this world, uh -huh, the goal is not just to preach to people who already know, but to reach the people who don't know. 
And it may mean that you may have to change your attitude. Because some of us are so spiritual and so earthly minded that we're no heavenly good. And there are people who we look down on every time we go into town. But if that were Jesus, he would stop by there a little while. He may not have money to give them, but he would give them something more important. Come on now, than money. And so he's hanging out with the people that we will never go close to. And that was the publicans and the sinners. I got good news for you. I would rather hang with Jesus than any one of y'all. Not because I don't like you, <laughs> but because I like Jesus more. Ah, y'all ain't saying nothing. Ain't so watch this. Hundred sheep. Mm -hmm. One goes missing. He leaves in ninety and nine. Come on now. And he goes looking for the one. I'm glad he looked for the one. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if he just let the one go away and, and just do his own thing, come on now, and not look for him, then the one may never make it back. But the reality is he decides, I'm going to go find the one because one is just as important as the 90 and 9. In other words, we should not be happy when we've got 90 and 9, but one is still outside. The goal is to make sure that everybody who needs to hear the gospel will hear the gospel and then they can make their mind up. So he grabs the one and he brings him back. Hallelujah. He puts him on his shoulder so he won't run away again. He puts him on his shoulder. He takes him back to the fold. Hallelujah. And he is now with the 99. They're back to 100. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven. Oh, you all didn't hear what I said. There's rejoicing in heaven. And I want to say this to you. If there's rejoicing in heaven, then why on earth are we the most miserable people when we come to church on Sabbath morning? Come on now. We sit down and we look sad. I don't know if we call it reverent or stoic or sacred. But every time I look at the Bible and it talks about heaven, there is nothing that sounds like that about heaven. Heaven is about rejoicing. Heaven is about excitement. Heaven is about joy. Is anybody in the building? I've been miserable down here too long. I've got to get to heaven to get excited. Come on now. But I declare the Bible says the kingdom of God is here now and if the Bible says the kingdom of God is here now that I came by here to tell you they should be rejoicing here uh, so what do this uh, the second part of the trilogy is, is, is there is a lady hallelujah there is a lady you know the story there is a lady and she has ten coins how many coins Ten coins and 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 but she loses one coin so one of the coins goes missing now this is interesting because in this this situation the first one he uses a man the second one he uses a woman now, there's something about this because we have to realize that we live in a world where you have to be diverse since I'm so glad you're on the platform today because we would have broken the diversity rule Boy, I tell you. So watch this. The other reason why it had to be a woman is because women look for things better than men. Have your, your wife will say to you, go upstairs and find the keys. You will go upstairs, you will look in two seconds, come back down and say the keys are not there. Come on now, every household has gone through that. Then the wife goes up exactly where she told you to go. Come on now, exactly where she told you to go and the keys were there. She come, and then she says, didn't you not see the, no, I didn't see the keys. How did you show, I, I did not see the keys. So the woman in our text, come on now, she's looking for a coin. Now, she, she, she looks everywhere, but she can't find the coin. Now she lights a candle. Mm. And when she lights the candle, hallelujah, then she looks and she finds the coin. I came by here to tell you that the world has lost a coin. The world is in trouble. Come on now. They crucified the coin. Come on now. Some have rejected the coin. 
Ah, but I guarantee you, if you would just let your little light shine. I said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Are you here? Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I declare, if we light our candles, the world will find the one that's missing. And then this one says, not only is there rejoicing in heaven, but it says they call the neighbors. And they say, it's party time. Hey, you ought to know that when, no, 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 no. when, he, he, when, he, when God has done something for you, don't keep it to yourself. You got to tell somebody else whether they believe in God or not. Come on now. You ought to open your mouth and let them know, hallelujah, what God has done for you. The community was excited and there was party. Ah, the third one now, the final one, and we're talking about how to be a G-rated Christian in an X-rated world. So the third one is very important. This narrative has reached the world all around. Everyone knows this story very well. It's from verse 11 onwards in Luke 15. It tells us about a boy. You know the story. The boy, it looks like you guys because he was about 18, maybe 20. Come on now. This guy is a strange guy. The reason why this guy is strange is because, well, he's actually not strange. Yeah, he must be from Europe somewhere. Yeah. This, this situation will not work in Africa. The boy at 18 goes to his dad and says, you got some money that you saved up for me. Give me my money. This ain't gonna work in Africa. And it won't work in the Caribbean where I'm from. Come on, say amen. It ain't gonna work. If I go to my dad and ask him for money, my dad would have a good laugh. But this dad gives his son the money. The first thing we need to know about the text is that the dad has money saved up for his son. I wish some of us would take that example. I declare that many of us are getting older, but our children have nothing to fall back on. Uh, some of our children who are struggling through school right now should not be struggling through school if we had saved up some... I took out a policy for my kids when they were, I think, three years old, so that when they got to the age, hallelujah, of going to uni, I didn't have to pay a dime. And some of us are sitting here looking big and everything, but our children are struggling. This text reminds us that we should have something laid aside for our children. I'm tired of going to graduations of people who look like me and all I see is balloons and flowers. But when I look at the other people who don't look like me, their kids are getting keys to flats and keys to apartments and getting keys to cars. Come on now, I'm getting a good start in life. So watch this, I gotta hurry up, watch this. This is powerful. The boy takes the money. And the boy goes, hallelujah. And the first thing he does, the Bible says, he wasted his substance on riotous living. Charles Dickens couldn't write this. Shakespeare couldn't write it. Come on now. This is powerful descriptive language. If you've ever done English language, you will know that this is powerful. He wasted his substance on riotous living. In other words, your substance is everything that you're made of. Come on now. Your substance is your inner fiber. Your substance is your Sabbath school lessons. Your substance is your, is, is, is your singing in the choir. Come on now. Your substance is coming to church every Sabbath. Your substance is who you are and what God has made you to be. He wasted his substance on riotous living. Everything he knew was now wasted. And then he takes a journey into a far country. And it wasn't far because of distance. Because he walked there. It was far because of his state of mind. I wish somebody was here, I tell you. 
I tell you, boy, if I was a motivational speaker, you would have paid thousands for that one line. Come on, say amen. But I'm glad I don't collect money. Amen. Because maybe I wouldn't have come to Zimbabwe. Come on, say amen. That was good. <laughs> Someone going to get that on Thursday. Amen. Now watch this. It gets nice. It gets nice. I'm ducking like this so I can see you all. Is that all right? Now watch this. He wasted his substance on riotous living. Then he goes into a far country. The far country now is the place where the enemy is. That is the place where everything evil looks good. How many people know that uh, the devil has made evil things look good? That man who's supposed to be a preacher, come on now, looks good, but he's actually evil. That woman, come on now, who's supposed to be, a, yeah, yeah, I can go further with that, but I'm going to leave it in the interest of time. But let's go to the things. There are things that look good, but they're really evil. And maybe some of them may be the mobile phone that we hold in our hands. Maybe it's the things we look at on TV. Maybe it's the movies that we're engaging in. But whatever it is, I'm come, I came by here to tell you, the devil will make things look good and they're really bad. So here he goes, he goes down to the dealership in Palestine and he buys him a convertible BMW camel. Come on now. <laughs> hey, this one's got an extra hump. Come on now. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing in here. So he gets on the camel and he's moving now. He's got a little convertible and he's enjoying himself. Probably put a, a nice little stereo bows. Come on now, inside of it. And, and he's pumping up the volume. Is that all right? You've got every latest R&B song you ever thought of. He's having a good time. Hip hop is blowing through the speakers. And of course, he picks up some women along the way because a man never feels successful unless he's got some women. I didn't say a women, I said some women. I'm pausing for effect. And so he picks up a white woman, he picks up an Indian woman, picks up a Chinese woman, picks up a black woman. He's an equal opportunity diversity worker. He puts them in the back of the BMW and now he's moving towards his apartment. Come on now, he's moving towards his apartment. He's moving, he's moving at rapid pace now. He goes and he buys himself a penthouse apartment. But how many people know that the devil will set you up and make you look good and then pull away everything? Come on now. Pull away everything and make you crash. Sin, the Bible says, only lasts for a season. And one day, after playing the game of life, his money runs out. Young people, I got words for you. Money, it does run out and the question is when it runs out you're going to realize that the money you thought was going to take you all the way to success is worth nothing come on now the bible says in these last days the money will be thrown in the streets and nobody's going to want it and you ought to know this in these last days you got to hold on to jesus he's worth more than any money you can have and so now we're in trouble, the boy's in trouble, and they repossess the flat, they repossess the car. He's in trouble now. And all of those women left him, and he don't know what to do with himself. Well, the good news is, hallelujah, is that God is always waiting. <sighs> and so what happens now is this. So, so now he goes and he joins himself to a citizen of the country. Now this is a problem because the citizen of the country, uh-huh, uh-huh, is, is someone is someone that is not a good person why because he sends him into the pig pen to eat the food that the pigs did eat the problem with this is the boy is a jew jews are not even supposed to be uh, around the carcass of a pig but he sends him into a pig pen there's some people who tell me I would never use drugs. Come on now. I'd never prostitute. I'd never do this. I'd never do that. But there comes a time. Uh -huh, that I'm going to tell you, everyone has a price. A price when they won't think twice. The boy was desperate. And so he went against his religious values. And ended up in a pig pen. And he wanted to eat the food that the pig did eat. I don't know about you guys, but have you ever been to a pig pen? Yeah. A pig pen smells bad. Yeah. I went one to one not long ago, and I remember I was walking down the street, and I smelt it like a long way off. The pig pen. 
when you look at the pigs, they, they're in there and the pigs eat filth. Come on now. No wonder God says we shouldn't eat it. Amen, everybody. Yeah, and, and so the pig pen smells bad and the pigs are rolling around in mess. Come on now. They're eating mess. They're digesting mess. And they're regurgitating the mess. It sounds like board meeting. Oh, somebody gonna get it on Thursday. We have become specialists at eating mess, rolling around in mess, digesting mess, sharing the mess. Come on now. And before you know, we're all messed up. I came by here to tell the church that we got to get our life in order. We've got too much mess in the church. And people have come like this prodigal son to get help. But we're more focused on our mess. Now watch this. The story ends with hope. Come on now. Uh, uh, while he was in the pig pen. My mother used to lie to me. And tell me that there are certain places God won't go. If that's the case, then I wouldn't be on this platform right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says, where can I run from his spirit? Come on now. Wherever I go, he will go. Psalm 139. Come on, say amen. And so watch this. In the midst of the pig pen, here comes the Holy Ghost. Like Spider-Man spinning a web, like Batman flying through the air. Come on now. Like Superman. Here comes the Holy Ghost. He lands in the middle of the pig pen. Hallelujah. And while he's in the pig pen, the Bible says, the boy says, I will arise and go. Don't you tell me the Holy Ghost won't go to certain places. Hallelujah. In the middle of the pig pen. Here comes the Holy Ghost. And the good news of the gospel is this. The boy didn't just stay in the pig pen. You know, some of you all are, 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 are not like this guy. Because you would preach all week long. And even the devil himself wants to give his heart to Jesus. But you ain't going to move. You would say, I would arise and go to my father, but when the appeal is made, you sit down. I'm glad that this boy ha, heard the music in the background. You know that music, the Savior is waiting to open your heart. Why don't you let him come in? Come on, now you know that music. Yeah, yeah he was hearing all that wonderful music in the pig pen. And now he gets up, hallelujah, and he starts making his way, and he's moving towards the pig pen, boy. So watch this, the boy's making his way. He smells bad, he looks bad, come on now. His clothes is torn, his beard is matted, his hair is matted, he looks terrible. But now as he makes his way to his father, hallelujah, from a distance, are you hearing what I'm saying? From a distance, his father says, I know that walk. Come on now. His father was already looking for him. He looks at him from a distance. His father now jumps over the veranda wall and he starts running towards his son. He's moving like Usain Bolt. Come on now. He's got to do a 9.9 .9 in order to get to his son because the devil can't get him again. Hallelujah. He's got to get him quicker than anybody else. And he's moving towards his son. His black hair is blowing in the breeze. Come on now. His brown skin is sweating. His brown eyes is looking eager to grab hold of his son. Is someone known who I'm talking about? grabs hold of his son the Bible says hallelujah he hugs him mm. he doesn't care what he smelt like he hugs him doesn't care what he looks like he hugs him the boy didn't have to change his dress to come before Jesus hallelujah he hugs him didn't have to take off any jewelry to come before Jesus he hugs him didn't have to take off any pig pen behavior in order to come to Jesus you don't take it off before you come to Jesus. It comes off under conviction. Hallelujah. You got to get to Jesus first. If you don't, you're a legalist and you're dangerous. When you get to Jesus, page 270, the book Evangelism, Ellen White says, then everything that needs to drop off will drop off. 
Now watch the final piece of this. Boy, the daddy gives him a shoe. I've got shoes. And you've got shoes. And all God's children got. Ah, when I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes. And I'm going to walk all over God's heaven. Come on, say amen. And like the slave says, you may not have it on your feet, but you better have it on your mind. Then he gives him a ring. Now this is where Adventists struggle in the text. Because it was a ring. You can spiritualize it. You can fix it how you want to fix it. But when you look at the original language, it was a ring. But one thing I will say in defense of our church, hallelujah, is that people wear rings for so many reasons nowadays that I just believe it's a waste of time giving anybody a ring. I don't even believe in rings for engagements and marriages. Because they mean nothing nowadays. Somebody get mad, they pick it up, they throw it away, they find somebody else and they go away. And you just spent two, three million on a ring. Come on, say amen, are you struggling? But what God is looking for, the ring around your heart that changes your behavior, changes your attitude, changes your mindset. Come on now. Boy. He gives him a ring, gives him shoes, mm -hmm. and then he gives him a robe. Can we stay with that for a second? And then I'm done. Uh, I said it last night, I've got a robe, and you've got a robe, and all God's children got a robe. Revelation chapter 6 uh, and verse 10 and 11 lets us know that God has robes in a closet in glory. Hallelujah. And it has your name on it. Come on now. It has your, your, your heavenly size. Come on, say amen. Not your earthly size. You know, they're two different things because sin has made us short. That doesn't mean a sh the shorter one sin more. Come on, say amen. <laughs> But we got robes. I'm hastening on. But not only do we have robes. What's interesting with this text, and here comes the most important part. I think it's verse 24 or something. Here comes the most important part of the text. Everything else is good. But the most important part of this text is where the Bible says, go get the fatted calf and kill it. Because my son that was lost is now found. Him that was dead is now alive again. In other words, uh, if something doesn't die, then the boy cannot live. Hallelujah. I wish someone knew what I was just saying. Brethren, I want you to know today, it was because of Calvary why we live. Come on now. We were the ones in the pig pen. We were the one that squandered our father's money. We were the ones that messed up with all the different women and done all the different stuff. But I came by here to tell you, hallelujah, the Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Come on now. Why don't you let him come in? Mm. And so watch this. Go get a fatty calf. Kill the calf. Let the blood spill. Because the blood will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. It goes to the lowest valley. I'm talking about the blood. Right now in this university, there is blood. The blood is available for you and it's available for me. You may have spent some time in the pig pen. Your life may be a mess. But the good news of the gospel is, hallelujah, God has enough blood with excess. Come on now, in order to save us. Well, someone said that Adventists don't go to parties. But I read the Bible. And at the end of this text, <laughs> he turned them to turn up the volume. Get some music. Come on, say amen. Now, I know some of you all are not used to this, so you can remain in your sanctimonious religion that you have. But I follow the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And if it's good enough for the prodigal son, 
and it's good enough for the person that represents Jesus Christ in our story. Come on now, then it's good enough for me. Every time a sinner comes to the Lord, hallelujah. I don't need to go to a birthday party. I don't need to go to a Christmas party. I don't need to go to any of those parties. But when a sinner comes home, boy, you better turn up the volume. You better not sit down like a lump on a log. Come on now. You better stop looking mummified, zombified, and dead. You better open your eyes, open your mouth, lift a hand. Come on now and begin to praise God because it's party time. And this morning we're about to see a baptism. Come on, say amen. It's party time in here. Is that all right? It's party time. Heaven is rejoicing. The community is rejoicing. Church, don't let God down by sitting there looking like spectators. It's party time. Hallelujah. And every Sabbath should be party time. Every time we get together should be party time. Why? Because we're all sinners that have come to Jesus Christ. And so, heads about as the close, we're getting ready to get to the pool. And uh, we're about to make a decision. This is my last sermon to you. And I'm going to ask you to start reflecting on your life. Because I believe that God is about to do something in this building right now that we never thought he could do. And so you're here this morning. And you're thinking about what we talked about. The first thing is, is that the sheep was lost. But praise God, Jesus went and found it. The second one is the woman in the text has lost a coin. Hallelujah. But God uh, is giving her a light and now she shines the light. Come on now. And this little light of mine. And all of a sudden she finds the coin and hallelujah, there's rejoicing. Well, I don't know who's going to make Jesus rejoice today or heaven happy. But the Bible says that this young boy that was messed up out of his mind, lost and on the way to hell, hallelujah, decided to come back home. And when he came back home, the father and everybody else was excited. Why? Because, mm -hmm, because the boy that was lost is now found. The one that was going astray has now been brought home. Today, you're in this building. And you want to say, Pastor Ray, I want to come home. I want to come home to Jesus. I have been in this place, but I've been lost. I've been living a life that is not according to God's will. And I want to come home. I don't have long, but what I do have, hallelujah, is a moment. And that's all God needs. I know we got a lot of lights up front, but I'm still going to ask you to come and stand on the platform with me. If that is you and you're saying, look, I don't care what I would think about me. I can't let this week of prayer end without saying I'm coming back home to Jesus. Yes, I've been baptized. Yes, I've been in the church. Yes, I was good when I came here, but now things are not good. I want to come back to God. I want there to be rejoicing in heaven. I want every demon in my life to flee. I want my attitude to change and I want my mind to be on Christ. I want Christ to meet me. Come on now. And so as my sister sings the song, I'm going to ask you to come down these aisles. Join me on the platform. We're going to pray together. So come on, where are you? It's time for you to come home. Come on. Come on. Don't about your friends. Don't about your family. You're coming home. God bless you. Come join me up here. Coming home, come on. Don't look at them. You need to move too. Come on. Hallelujah. Be bold this morning. Come on now. Don't just stand in your seat. I'm asking you to come join me here. Let's make this a public testimony. Come on. There's more of you. I know. Sing it with power, sis. Come on. God bless you. Come in. Come in. Young men, where are you? I've only seen women so far. Where are you, men? Come on. You know the life you're living isn't a good one. It's time for you to come home. Oh, sing it, church. Sing it with power.
Come on. Come on. Don't let this week end without the full commitment to God. Your life is a mess. Make the move. Your life isn't where it should be. Make the move. Your devotional life doesn't happen. Make the move. Your prayer life is dead. Make the move. Come on. Oh, coming home. Come on. Come on. Be bold. Be strong. Yes. to baptize some folk and I told the pastor this morning and yesterday that there's more of you that need to join this baptismal train and today you want to come home to God not rededication but you want to come to God because you want there to be rejoicing in heaven and you're saying I want to join this baptism this morning you didn't plan to, but you would like to. We have time for you to come. I'm going to ask the church to sing that chorus with my sister again. And as they sing, if you'd like to join in that baptism this morning, I want you to make a move down this aisle and say, this is my morning. I didn't plan it, but I'm coming home. Let's sing it together. Come on. Come on, man, woman, boy, or girl. You're saying, I want to be a part of that baptism. I don't want to miss out. I don't know when the next one will be, but I want to do this one. You may be standing on the platform. I don't know. I don't know. But you're saying, this is my time. Come on. Where are you? I can't see well, but where are you? I know you're here. Don't turn God down. Don't say yes to the devil and no to Jesus. It's time for you to come to God. One last time. Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Oh yes, are you coming? Jesus is waiting. Come on. Come on, let's make heaven happy. Let there be rejoicing. Pastor Ray, I'm coming to give my heart to Jesus. I want to be baptized. I want my life to change. I want to show that I'm in love with Jesus. Come on. Come on. About to pray. About to pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. And we're about to pray. As we are preparing to baptize, even if I say amen and you feel moved by the Spirit, you didn't want to do it publicly, you can still come round the back, hallelujah, and say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to be baptized. Father, those who are standing on the platform, they have been so bold today. They want the world to know that they're coming home. They want the world to know that there's no more messed up life. They're getting it right with Jesus. Lord, we can sing and shout all we want to. But the reality is there is a personal rendezvous that we must have with Jesus Christ. I pray that you will seal their decisions in Jesus' name. 
and I promise and I pray that they will not go back uh, to the life that they used to have. I pray that they will have a devotional life. I pray that they'll open your word more. I pray that they will pray more. I pray that they will talk to you without ceasing. Lord, be with each one of them now in Jesus' name. And Lord, reward their boldness this morning with, with powerful, positive things so they can share their testimonies with people around. Then, Lord, I want to pray for those that uh, need to be baptized. Some have already made that decision, and we're so grateful for your spirit moving. And I ask, Lord, that you will seal those decisions. And, and Lord, I pray that as they prepare even now, that they will be ready, hallelujah, to meet you when you shall come. But for those that didn't come, for those that have sat down, for those that have, have not made the move that they know they should make, I pray that you will continue to prick them, continue to allow your spirit to talk to them, just like you did to Saul on that chariot, on that horse. And Lord, I pray that in sooner rather than later, they will see the bright light and they will be led to the pool to be baptized. Lord, I pray that you will bless the proceedings as we're moving now. And I pray that we will be rejoicing, not just in heaven, but rejoicing here. Before I close my prayer, there's someone who is struggling uh, to meet the finances for, to pay the money for their exams on Monday. Uh, there is someone who is struggling, not only for finances, but your grades have been not good and you want God to do something impossible for you. If that's you, I'm gonna ask you to just lift your hand where you are and I'm gonna say a prayer for you. You are financially struggling in regards to paying the money to take the exams and you're also oh, are struggling in class and you really want God to do something extraordinary for you. You've worked hard and you really want God to bless you. Father, the hands are raised all around the auditorium and now in the name of Jesus, I pray that finances will show up. I pray that all of those who are struggling and asked me to pray for them and came to me personally, I pray that they will call me with a testimony on Monday saying that the money showed up and God took care of the business in Jesus' name. And then Lord, I pray for those who've worked hard but yet their grades are not great and they're going into this exam and they're looking concerned they're looking stressed lord in the name of jesus christ i pray that you will reward their hard work hallelujah by giving them a grade they never thought they'd ever get and then lord after the miracle has happened i pray that they will testify of the goodness of god Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of being at this university. Continue to bless it in all its ways. Be with every faculty member, be with all the staff, be with all the students. And Lord, if I never see them again on this side of the world, I pray that we will all make it to the kingdom together. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Oh, come on, let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. You take care. Amen.